In our recent videos, we introduced and demoed two hobby projects showing different ways that you could implement 2D orbital gravity in Gato. In this third project, we'll be using a combination of techniques to merge the classic concept of planets on rails with more dynamic objects that are impacted by the combined gravity of all the masses in the system, the n-body orbs, but then again naming things is hard. These projects are available in GitHub private repositories. Stick around for more details on when we'll make that public. Let's get to it. The main game scene contains several nodes, including two sliders, one to control the speed scale and one to control the camera zoom, a panel on the left to hold a list of all the objects in the space, and allowing us to focus our camera on these objects. A panel on the right showing the important orbital or physics properties of the selected object. These readouts might be familiar to you if you've watched our other orbits demos. If not, I plan on diving into some of the details on these analytic solutions in future videos. A star node to act as the large central mass in the simulation. It also holds a tree of child nodes, which are the planets on rails in the game. We'll use the mass body scene in the ellipse class for these planets and a single starter orb that's configured to orbit the innermost planet. We can add more orbs while the game runs, and these objects will use the orb scene and the trajectory class. Before we get into some code highlights, here's a quick demonstration. We have a single inner planet that's being orbited by our first orb. The actual path of the orbs will be drawn in red, and when it makes sense, we draw possible trajectories of the orb. You'll see them pop in and out many times. None of these trajectories are truly accurate because of the combined gravity effects of all objects in the system. In future videos, we might explore implementing circles of influence and patched conics, like spheres of influence but in 2D, to make the mapping of trajectories more reliable. That has a bunch of implications and depends on if our goal is to make a simulation or to make a game. For the outer planet, we have a more complex scenario. This planet has two moons, and one of those moons has its own moon. Maybe it's not the most realistic scenario, but it allows us to better test the code that handles the nesting of these planets on rails. The user interaction is real simple and follows the same scheme we use for our other orbits projects. You have your basic slider controls for speed and zoom, but you can also use the mouse to add new orbs to the game world. You can left click to give the orb zero velocity or right click to give it a more traditional elliptical orbit. Right, now let's look at some of the GD script and nodes. Like in the other projects, the game script controls most of the user's interactions, like selecting objects to focus on, zooming in and out, and changing the speed scale of the game. Things get more interesting when we start to look at the star, the planet, and the orbs. The star script itself doesn't do much, it simply acts as the central mass for our planetary system. Those planets in the system are moving on rails around that star. They won't be affected by any other masses and will consistently move around in their orbits without fail. We use a mass body scene for the planets. These nodes can be nested in a tree structure, allowing us to create moons around the planets. The script for the mass body uses state vectors to solve the orbit and the ellipse class to draw the orbit. It might seem familiar if you've watched our channel before, and if you haven't, you can check out the videos on the channel. The last major part of the project is in the end body orbs. These orbs will be affected by the combined gravity of all masses in the system, including other orbs. In a game, these might be the craft controlled by the player, or maybe they'll be satellites or debris, or even projectiles. I'm calling them n-body orbs, but I don't know if that's right. What do you think? The orb scene and its underlying script do a few things. First, it keeps track of the position of the orb and records it in a line 2D node. We'll draw this line to show where the orb has been in the past. It's interesting to watch how the orbs can suddenly and drastically change direction, and we can even see epicycle-like patterns in our starter orb. Second, it calculates trajectories around the three major bodies in the system. That is, for the star and both the inner and the outer planets. We use the state vectors of the orbs relative to those bodies to draw the orbit, assuming one exists. Keep in mind, none of these are very accurate because of the way we're applying gravity from all objects in the game. Essentially, we're drawing the Kepler orbit of the orb as if the star or the planet was the only object that was involved. It's a simple but crude method, but it does the job. It won't scale at all, but it's good enough for our proof of concept and we can always consider different use cases later. And that's the tour of the third project. Put that together and you have a star with multiple planets on rails and orbs that move around the system in some crazy ways. 
There's more to it, but that should give you a good picture of how the pieces are connected together. Like I said before, the project is in a private repository on GitHub, and we'll make it public when we hit 250 subscribers. We might give early access to the private repositories before then, so drop us a comment and let us know if you're interested. Watch out for a few more Orbits videos coming soon, and be sure to subscribe because later this year, we're going to have all of these hobby projects ported to Godot 4, which has even more accuracy and potential. Thanks for watching.